Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And now that all of the film has been watched and the grades are finalized, it's time to break down the 2019 NFL Draft prospect rankings. Before we dive into the prospect rankings video, let's take a look at how we go about grading these guys on film. For the skill positions, we take a look at a prospect's best and worst game statistically and the best matchup before we finalize his film grade. And from there, the player is assigned a grade on a 100 point scale. We don't believe in the term backup per se. If you're the NFL, you're one of the best players at your position. So we consider you a starter in waiting, or at least that's how I would look at it if I'm a GM or a head coach. So without further ado, let's dive into the video with our number one graded prospect at the position. Nick Bosa of Ohio State grades out as our number one defensive end prospect in the draft class. He's a well-rounded defensive end who plays the run equally as effective as he does the pass. Every time you watch him play, you notice that he's being a constant nuisance along the defensive line. He may not get there all the time, but it's constant enough to where you, it frustrates you as an offense to the point where you begin to hamstring your own offense by going away from him, which is a true mark of a great defender. He's able to play with both power and speed and has very good change of direction skills, and he's one of the premier players in this draft class. Looking at the rest of the top 10, Rashawn Gary out of Michigan has outstanding athleticism and could legitimately play anywhere up front. That athleticism, combined with his versatility, makes him an excellent prospect in my opinion. Montez Sweat of Mississippi State, despite his linear frame, is able to hold the point of attack really well and be effective versus the run. He's a fluid athlete that also shows the ability to drop in coverage as well. Brian Burns of Florida State has pretty good technique along the defensive line, so that's why I graded him out here as a defensive end as opposed to an edge rusher. He's more technically sound in a three-point stance than he is in a two-point stance. He's stout versus a run and is a quick twitch athlete, fast in all directions, and does a great job of pressuring the quarterback. Chuck Harris out of Buffalo, sorry for the wrong logo right there, is one of the better pass rushers, power rushers, I'm sorry, in the draft class. I thought he showed some pass rushing savvy down at the Tropical Bowl back in January. He's a sleeper, in my opinion, in this group. Anthony Nelson of Iowa is a player whose tape really stood out to me. His hand usage is the best part of his game in my opinion. They are very active, which allows him to be in control throughout the play and much involved on both ends of defense. His read and reaction skills are A+, and I could also see him kicking down inside a technique as a 5-tech in certain defenses. Moving on to prospects 11 through 20, and Amani Bledsoe of Oklahoma is an excellent point of attack player versus the run. Austin Bryan of Clemson. Jordan Price of Carson Newman and Chase DeBoer, fitting first name for him, by the way, out of Central Washington, are similar in that they do a great job of reading what's going on in the backfield, quickly making a decision, and giving great pursuit to the ball carrier. Joel Van Pelt of Calgary is a top CFL draft prospect along the defensive line, who also had a solid week of work at the East-West Shrine game. Mike Anuoha is a former Oklahoma Sooner who transferred down to Texas A&M Commerce and became a stellar player for the Lions. He was able to bulk up a bit at Commerce while also growing his game in the run defense department. Dwayne Hendricks out of Pitt, I feel like, still has some upside within his game. He's really good in spurts, and the hope is that he can begin to streamline the consistency for four quarters. If what he did down at the Tropical Bowl all week long is of any indication, then that seems to be what we should expect from him moving forward. He does a lot of things really well and has an assortment of tools in his toolbox to work with. Rounding out our defensive end rankings with prospects 21 through 23, and I like what I've seen on tape from Midwestern State's defensive end Alec DiValerio. He's been busy on the all-star circuit all January and has garnered a lot of interest as a result, an athletic end that has to smooth out certain parts of his game. Moving on to the five tech defensive ends or four eye players and Isaiah Bugs of Alabama graded out as the best one in the class this year. He has very good ball get off and has great football awareness. He's built like a bison and is a pocket collapsing defender, whether that's on the interior or out on the outside. He's able to move across three different techniques with ease, even showing the ability to stand up on occasion and rush the passer. Bugs is a great athlete and a fantastic football player. Now here's the rest of the rankings for this group. Zach Allen out of Boston College's punch and bull rush definitely gets it's offensive lineman weak in the knees as he's then able to bully his way into the backfield. Charles Omenahu of Texas reminds me a lot of Kareem Martin and how effective he is with his length on the inside. John Kaminsky, Kaminsky I'm sorry, of Charleston has the upside as he still continues to add weight while also getting comfortable at playing at that weight. He was able to acclimate himself well at the Senior Bowl playing up two levels and playing really well. Two Division II ends to keep an eye on are Jonathan Harris of Lindenwood and Alec Heldreth of Clarion. Harris uses his hands well to read, disengage, and react to the ball carrier. Although 
his pad level can get a bit high. You don't see him lose leverage often, nor do you see him getting moved off the spot a lot. He's going to be a very good run defender in the NFL. Alec Heldrick put together an excellent career at Clarion, terrorizing PSAC offensive linemen in the process. He's another versatile player capable of playing multiple techniques up front. He's got good functional strength and takes great pursuit angles to the ball carrier. I think he could easily get up to about 285, 290 and not lose any athleticism. So that's a wrap here from the Football Game Plan Studios. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe on iTunes, the Football Game Plan Podcast. We can find our Scout Team Podcast, which has a lot of 2019 NFL Draft prospect interviews. And also be sure to subscribe on YouTube to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan.